The strange thing about American rivers is that they rarely reveal their secrets to the casual explorer. They flow peacefully across valleys, twist silently around forested bends, and whisper over beds of gravel and ancient stone. But beneath that calm surface, there is a hidden architecture, an invisible blueprint carved by physics, pressure, and time. It is a blueprint that determines exactly where gold will hide. And if you understand that blueprint, even a quiet bend in a river can become a map to buried wealth. To the untrained eye, gold seems randomly scattered, like nature tossed it into rivers without purpose. But nothing about gold is random. It behaves with absolute obedience to natural laws. Laws so consistent that a skilled prospector can stand beside a river and predict, with surprising accuracy, the precise corner, crack, or pocket where gold will gather. This ability, this almost supernatural confidence, is not magic. It is science. Hard, measurable, patient science. And it begins far upstream before gold ever touches the river when it is still locked inside the mountain. Deep within America's fractured bedrock, gold forms in hydrothermal veins. Thin, lightning-shaped fractures filled with quartz and metallic minerals. When the mountain weathers, the veins break and gold is freed. But it is not immediately swept away. Gold is almost 20 times heavier than water and far denser than the surrounding sediment. So instead of floating, it crawls. It sinks. It resists movement like a stone, trying to hold its ground against a flood. This density is the key to everything that happens next. Imagine a raindrop falling in the Colorado Rockies. It trickles down the slope, joins other droplets, becomes a stream, then a river. Along its journey, the water scrapes loose grains of sand, flakes of mica, fragments of quartz, and the occasional piece of liberated gold. The river becomes a conveyor belt, carrying everything downhill. But as speed changes, the river begins sorting its load like a scientist separating materials in a laboratory. The lightest pieces, clay, silt, fine sand, travel for miles, sometimes all the way to the sea. Medium weight gravel moves only in storms. And then there is gold, the stubborn outlier. Gold does not travel unless the conditions are perfect. High energy, fast water, violent floods. Only when the river unleashes its full force does gold move meaningfully. And even then, it doesn't move far. This is why gold accumulates in patterns and why certain corners of American rivers are surprisingly wealthy. To understand these patterns, geologists study the physics of flowing water. When a river flows straight, the water moves in a predictable line, fast in the center, slow along the edges. But when the river bends, something remarkable happens. The water on the outside of the curve accelerates with almost terrifying power. The water on the inside slows dramatically, collapsing into a zone of low pressure. In that moment, the river becomes a trap. Every heavy particle being carried downstream, gold, magnetite, hematite, garnet, black sand, loses its momentum and drops into this low pressure pocket. It is like a vacuum chamber for dense minerals. The inside bend of the river becomes a natural concentrator, a device engineered by nature to force gold downward. But the concentration process is even more dramatic than it appears. At the very moment water slows on the inside of the bend, it does not simply glide peacefully. It folds backward. It curls. It forms a swirling eddy, a miniature whirlpool that spins heavy particles in circles until they fall into the deepest part of the riverbed. This swirling motion is one of the most reliable gold indicators in any American river. To a geologist, this swirling tells a story, 
To a prospector, it's a signal. If you see a backward current curling along the inside of a bend, you are watching the exact force that pulls gold out of suspension and buries it. Most people don't notice this swirl, but a trained eye always does. Yet the real gold learning moment comes when you look beneath the visible surface. Beneath the gravel of these bends lie layers, geological pages written over centuries. Each major flood leaves its own signature, a layer of cobbles, a layer of sand, a sheet of clay, a band of black sand. And somewhere within those layers, heavy gold settles quietly, waiting for the river to return and deposit the next generation of sediment on top of it. Some rivers hide gold only inches deep. Others guard it under three or four feet of layered deposits. But no matter where it hides, the same rules apply. Gold does not rest randomly. It follows weight, turbulence, energy loss, and the specific geometry of the river. This is why the odd corners of American rivers, those quiet inside bends, contain far more history than meets the eye. They are not just bends. They are collection points engineered by nature. They are gold archives. And the scientific techniques used to study these corners today are far more advanced than those used in the old mining days. One of the most powerful techniques is reading the river's velocity zones. In a documentary, you might see a scientist step into a river with a small meter that looks like a tiny underwater propeller. What they are measuring is water speed. Gold drops out of suspension when the water slows below a specific threshold, usually below one foot per second. Anywhere water crosses that threshold, gold begins to settle. When water speed drops, gold drops with it. That drop almost always happens in the same places. The inner curve of a bend, downstream of large boulders, in depressions in the bedrock, in cracks and crevices, behind natural obstructions, and at the base of sudden drops. The inside corner, however, remains the single most powerful of all these traps. To understand its power, Imagine the river's path like a racetrack. The outside edge is the fast lane. The inside is the slow lane. All heavy racers, the gold, are pushed inward. They aren't pushed slowly. They are pushed consistently, predictably, with every twist of water. This is why in the late 1800s, seasoned prospectors in California began to teach newcomers something simple but prophetic. Gold rides the inside rail. They didn't know the science, but they knew the results. Gold was always there. As science advanced, we discovered something even more fascinating. These bends not only trap gold, they lock it in place using three natural mechanisms that work together like a perfect machine. The first mechanism is velocity drop. The second is the backward eddy that tumbles gold downward. The third is the underlying structure of the riverbed itself. If the riverbed beneath the bend is made of loose gravel, some gold will settle, but much of it can shift with future floods. But if the riverbed contains bedrock shelves, dips, cracks, or clay layers, then gold becomes permanently trapped. It sinks until it can sink no more. A scientist might describe this as gold reaching its terminal resting point. A prospector has a simpler name for it, pay dirt. And what is most astonishing of all is that many of these odd corners hold gold that predates the modern river entirely. Some gold has been sitting in the same pocket for centuries, locked in place by floods that shaped the valley long before the first European set foot in North America. Standing at one of these bends, a trained expert knows the river is telling a story. Every ripple, every swirl, every submerged stone is part of a layered language that reveals where the goal will be. And once you understand that language, walking along a river becomes something entirely different. It becomes reading, interpreting, mapping. 
Every trained prospector has a moment that changes them forever. When they realize that finding gold is not luck, but an understanding of how nature thinks. This is why the odd corner of an American river bend isn't odd at all. It is nature's most reliable gold trap. It is the quiet heartbeat of the river's hidden wealth. It is the place where science and treasure meet. But the bends are only the beginning because what the river hides beneath them, ancient channels, buried waterfalls, natural riffles carved into bedrock, takes the story into deeper and far more lucrative scientific territory. And to understand those, we must follow the river further into places where few people think to look.